Hi guys, uh, I, hopefully you've been watching my videos on uh, you know the tools and the base wrap and how to wrap lead. Uh, what I've done here is I've actually just went ahead before the video and I, I've set myself up here. This material right here is called Marabou. Uh, what this does when it gets slick is it slicks into a little uh, trailing little tail just like a leech. If I'm ever going to a lake and, and I don't know what's in that lake, what kind of bug is in there, I'm going to go for um, an olive woolly bugger. I have one specific woolly bugger in my arsenal that consistently catches, it outfishes every other woolly bugger I have. This green olive one is always my starter. If I don't get anything with it, then about 15 minutes later, I'll change up to black. If I'm not getting anything with the black, I'll go to brown. If I'm not getting anything with the brown, then I'll start switching up to colors. So anyways, this is what I'm gonna tie today for you guys. And now you're gonna see the steps kind of bounce through because I don't wanna take, I don't wanna have you guys sitting there for a half an hour watch me tie one fly. We're gonna tie in some marabou. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this feather and I'm gonna come down to this other, this fluffy stuff down here. And, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold the feather in my hand right here and, and I'm just gonna just strip this stuff off, off of the stem here, just like that. So what I'm left with is I'm left with a feather that looks like that. Reason I do that is because I don't want to grab all this stuff and have it in one big fat hunk. I want to get to the stuff that I need, which is from here and above. That's the stuff that I want. Now you might say, well, yeah, but you still have some fluffy stuff down in there. Why don't you get rid of that? Well, because if I got rid of that, then I would be down to like just a couple of sprigs. And we want a decent tail on there, but we don't want a big fat mess on the end of the hook. So that's why I stripped the marabou down about that far. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gather this stuff up to a point like that. And I'm going to grab it. I'm going to try to keep that point as clean as I can. All right. Now, when I tie this onto the hook here, I'm going to tie it on right on the very top. Now, some guys like to have these big gaudy tails sticking out here. Uh, there's a problem with that. When that tail is sticking out there, the fish, their mouths are very sensitive, guys. They can, they can tell when this thing hits them. If it's going to hit them back here, if their mouth is back here and the, and the tip of the hook is here, well, how are you going to hook the fish? You can't because they're going to short strike it. They're going to come up and they're going to take a nip at this tail and they're not gonna, you're not going to get anything because your tip is clear up here and your material is way back here. So never make the mistake, guys, of tying these big, huge, gaudy tails on there. It doesn't work. It just doesn't catch fish. Stay away from it, okay? When I tie my tip on there, the, some guys have rules about, you know, okay, twice the length of the barb. Uh, you know, I just kind of stick it on there where I want it, where I think the fish, where I think it's going to be sufficient. And that is actually about the length of from the barb to the to the bend, you know, about the same distance again back. So I guess it is kind of a general rule. I, I don't follow that rule. I just kind of go where I think I need it to be. And that's where I think I need it to be right there. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Here's one of the tricks that will make this easier for you. Watch this. Watch my fingers right here. I'm going to just lick my fingers a little bit like that. Get them wet. Then I'm going to come back here. See what happened to that feather? Now it's gathered up. It's not going to stay that way because when it dries, it's just going to go back to the way it was. So I'm going to lick my fingers. I'm going to take that, gather that marabou up into a nice little, nice little tight wad there. And, and I'm going to try to trap it and keep it on top, top of the hook as much as I can. I'm pinching the marabou. I'm going to come over. I'm going to come into the slot of my fingers here, into there. I'm going to trap that thread. See how the thread is loose? Check this out. The thread comes up. It's in my finger. See how it's loose? There's a reason for that. Because I want to keep that thread trapped in my finger until I get it down here. Now here's another important key. The tendency is going to be to want to pull down on the thread when you're on the bottom of the hook. You don't want to do that. The reason you don't want to do that is because it's going to pull that marabou over and under the hook. So what we do is we keep it trapped between the fingers, we go down with a loose wrap, we come around here just, just enough to keep it down onto the hook and trap the marabou in here, and we come back up, we pinch that thread back into our fingers, and then we draw it tight. If I let loose of this, watch what happens. 
that mar marabou is right up on top of that hook exactly where we need it to be that's why when you pull on the thread to tighten your wrap down you do not pull down you pull up because when you pull up it keeps the material back up on the top side of the hook then we can go even further with one more wrap here let that hang we can actually take this material now and localize it to the top of the hook because now we've got it wrapped secure that guy's right there is about the best that you can wrap a tail onto a woolly bugger okay now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap that a couple more times and now here's another important step in this we're going to lift this feather up and we're going to get underneath it there what does that do i think you know it traps that feather right down in there and and it grabs both of those sides of that feather and squeezes it together and locks it so that's how you get a nice tight tie on your marabou and it will not come out by the way guys you notice when I when I get into these um, these ties with you guys you're gonna notice that um, you know I, I go to the greatest lengths of I can of making the absolute best fly that I possibly can and yeah some of my steps may take a little bit more time I could just wrap this stuff up quick but you know what when I go out there I don't want to have to um, keep reaching for flies because my flies are falling apart and that's why I do this I, I personally I went fishing with a guy and he, and he did exactly that and then he was into my flies and I didn't mind it I was you know I had the flies to give him but uh, it, it had he um, either bought flies that were a little better built or you know I don't know when he made them himself if would have put the time and the effort it takes to get them exactly perfect you're gonna have flies that I'm telling you guys they will last for a long long time you can fish these flies over and over and over again if you just take the simple extra steps that it takes to tie these flies in the best possible methods you can and, and, and hopefully that's what I'm teaching you here okay now when I'm gonna cut this off here um, you always want to have of course your thread hanging down here you want to pull this up here and you want to snip that off we've got it securely wrapped in there okay so I might leave a little bit hanging out there not a problem now if you want to do something what I did here was I wrapped my base my lead and then I wrapped it with thread what I did furthermore on there that I didn't tell you yet but I will now is I took my hardest head cement and, and in this jar right here and what I did was I took it and this is another little step that uh, you don't have to do it but I do I glued my thread onto my lead so now my thread and my lead are all glued together it is not going to come apart what I'll take here is I'll, uh, what I'll do here is I'll take this drip and I'll drip just a little bit onto that marabou right there now I'm going to take my thread I'm going to pull this marabou out of the way so that I don't gush thread onto it or, or glue and watch this check out what happens now what I'm doing is I'm burying my thread right into that whatever's left on that marabou I'm burying it in there and I'm, I'm securing that marabou I'll tell you guys you know what when the fish hits on that he's gonna yank on that marabou and chances are he will probably bite that marabou off but he will never ever pull that marabou out of the back of the hook so there it is uh, now I'm going to get to wrapping some wire on here, which will help secure my hackle, and I'll get to wrapping the chenille. By the way, this is chartreuse medium chenille right here, not small, not large, but medium chenille, and, uh, and I'm using olive hackle. Now you might say, well, that kind of looks brown. Well, it kind of does look brown, um, and I have found that with the brownness of this hackle against that chenille it provides a contrast I, I hope you can see this there's a there's a definite brown contrast over this now guys I have bought olive woolly buggers that were all just like monotone one color uh, there was no variation to color the, the the tire made exactly sure that it was all every single material was exactly the same color uh, I, I've fished those flies they don't work uh, well they do work but I'm not gonna say they don't work they do work but they don't work as well as this one here I came up with this myself with the little brownish tinge in the hackle and, and I don't know why I don't know why this fly outfishes all my other flies but it just does it has a little bit of brownness it says olive but it has a little brownness in it so 
I'm telling you, this is one of my very most secretive top flies. I'm letting it loose for you guys to go try. Uh, I guarantee it will work for you. Every lake has leeches in it, and, and this is the one that you want to start with. Uh, it, it doesn't catch fish in every single lake, every single time, every first cast, uh, but it has worked consistently better than all of the other flies that I have. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to tie my, my, um, my wire on here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a piece of wire out, and I'll show you what happens here. Um, now, take this wire. I'll just break it off because, again, I said in my video, do not cut wire with your scissors. Now, if you can zoom into this pair of scissors here, you can see that right down in this point right here, these scissors were actually made to cut metal right down in there. Okay, you can do it, but I choose not to because I don't ever want to you know, sc scrape metal on, on my scissors like that. I don't want to do I just did it, but I did it for the purpose of showing you guys. Do not do that. This stuff is thin. It's easy to break. You know, you, you, you don't need to go in there and use your scissors to cut this wire with. Okay, now here's, here's the piece of wire that I have. It's a little bit longer than I need. The reason it's longer than I need is so that when I get this thing wrapped up here, I still have something to grab onto. So let's go ahead and wrap our wire on here. And what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm wrapping at the back and I'm putting this on my side down at a 45 like I've always showed you. And, and I'm wrapping this wire on there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make sure that the wire is straight and, and I'm gonna get a nice, good, tight tie in the back here. Okay, now there's a reason why we have the wire in there. It's not because it's shiny or whatever. It's, it's actually going to bind all of our materials together. Tie the chenille. What we have to do is we have to line up all of our materials, get them all lined up in there, so that when we tie them in, um, we can just wrap them one after another right to the front of the hook. What I'm going to do here is I, I'm just going to go ahead and snip that off there and use this feather. Now, um, now what we want to do is we want to have the feather going, see how these barbs are small on the back and they're big on the front? Well, if, if I had this like this, what would happen? We'd have these big, huge, or these small, little, dinky, tiny barbs going into big barbs on the back. What does a leech's body look like? The leech's body looks like head, big, down to a tapered little, small, little tail that swims around in the water. It doesn't go from small to big. So we're trying to mimic this bug or this creature as best we can. How we do that is we make sure that the big stuff is towards the front of the hook and the little stuff is towards the back of the hook. Now, look at this, look at this piece of feather here. Um, if I were just to go to the back here and tie in that very, very back tip there, uh, first of all, it gets, it gets very thin down here and even the slightest pressure, it's going to pull it out. And believe you me, guys, when you get this stuff tied in here and you've got your chenille wrapped and you're going to wrap this piece of hackle in here and then it breaks, you're done. That's when you need the razor blade because you're past the point of no return. What I do to, um, to, to eliminate that problem is I come down here, I hold it by the tip, and I take my, my, my thumb and my forefinger and I, and I spread those, those hair barbules out like this. I get them all separated out, okay? Now, I can pull them to where they're just straight out like that. What I'll do is I'll come back in, and now I'm kind of down here a ways. I'm into a little bit stronger part of the feather rather than way out there at the tip. So I'm going to take this and cut it off right there. There's a little longer piece there. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Okay. Now, see, now I can grab that tip. I can still work with the feather and I can still pull these barbules back here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pull those barbules back. That's what I now have right there, guys. That's how you want to start with your feather on your woolly bugger. Okay, so you see where, you see right here where the V is? Right where that part stuck, these barbs are going back and these ones are going forward? Right there is where you want to tie it in. And you want to leave these barbules on there because that gives you something to bind your thread to. So let's go ahead and tie this in. Tie it in just like I showed you. Down it in a 45. Goes on there just like that. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this stuff forward. Okay. 
and then I'm going to I'm going to bind all that stuff down. I'm going to wrap it back here. Okay, so now now we've got what I like to call the ingredients of the fly. Now, at this point here, we're going to wrap our thread forward in big wraps because we've already we don't need to write wrap tight wraps because we're already there. And every time I take this out to the eye here, it's for the purposes of getting the fly, the getting the thread out of the way. The first thing that we want to wrap is our chenille. So let's go ahead and take our chenille around. The problem with using chenille though is if you keep rubbing on this stuff, you're going to rub it raw. So you don't want to keep, you know, sliding your hands down this and, and rubbing on it, or else you're going to be left with just a piece of white thread. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to wrap this down, and, and I'm going to keep it as nice and as tight as I can together. Here comes the hackle pliers. This is another thing that I talked about in my video of the tools. Here are the hackle pliers that I use. Again, I think these were about $14 or so, $13, I don't remember exactly how much. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to clamp these right onto the edge at the end of that barbule on that on that hackle there. Now the goal guys is to keep the good side which is the top side of the feather towards the front and the bottom side of the feather because you'll notice the feathers kinda lay down like this this being the bottom side and the other side being the the top side you know when you're looking at a feather you can tell what sides the top side uh, you don't need me to tell you that what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this around the fly and we're going to try to sink it down in between the wraps of chenille and you can see where they are. So you're going to come around here. Now the feather will want to have the tendency to naturally do it. Do not pull too hard or you'll pull it out. Do not pull too hard or you'll break it. If you do, you're done. So, so in order to keep it the way we want it to go, we pull that feather up like that and we try to keep those barbs with the good side up and facing forward and the belly of it back. There's a reason for it and I'll get to it in just one second here. I think you might already have, if you're watching the video and watching closely, you might have already figured out why we keep that belly side towards the back. It's because those feathers have the natural tendency to want to lay down and when they do they're going to want to lay to the back as you're coming around with your hackle keep brushing it back keep brushing it back just like that with your finger okay keep pulling that hackle back if you see that you're you know you're getting down close to your hackle uh, to the end of it uh, you know start start making bigger wraps here but anyways you just want to make sure that when you're wrapping it you're pushing and caressing this stuff back. It's a little dance you got to do with the feather and it's intricate. Oh, okay, I ran out. Did you see that? So now that means I made two bigger wraps. I knew I was going to run out, but I did that purposely for you guys to show you what happens. We need to make bigger wraps. We start back there. We just make bigger wraps coming forward. Okay. And there's a way that we're going to secure that in and it'll be with the wire. And I'll also show you that. So this comes up. We keep brushing our feather back. Now watch what happens. I'm going to be able to come out to the front of this hook here and I'm still going to have probably material left over. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's, it's guesswork, guys. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I come out to the front of the hook and now I'm right at the hook. So I'm going to go ahead. I just have a little bit left, so I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. And, and I go on, on this side of the hackle pliers, okay? And then I go on the, on the front side of the hackle pliers. Now, don't worry about those barbs that are sticking out looking ugly. We're going to trim those off. Don't worry about it. Uh, and, and back through there again, okay? A couple times on the back and then on the front, okay? Now, I always hold my material up when I cut it so that I'm not down here because if I go like this, I'm going to go 
and snip my thread. So I always want to hold this stuff up here and snip it off. That way, my, my material is up here, my thread's down here, I never run the risk of cutting my thread. And, and when you do that, by the way, uh, that is a bad thing too, you don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to try to snip this stuff off here. Here comes the wire. Now, this is the important thing. When you're wrapping your wire on, why do we put the wire on? Because we, again, I make the best possible flies that I possibly can. I want them to last. I want the fish to be able to eat them, but I want to keep fishing them for hours and hours and hours before I got to throw it away and get another one. Here's what we do. You notice that every time I wrap my materials on, I'm wrapping towards you, towards the camera, like this. And if I were looking at it clockwise motion, uh, I'm going to wrap my wire on a counterclockwise motion. Why? Here's why. Because when that wire comes over, it's going to double back over that other material and it's going to crisscross it and it's going to bind it down. If one little piece of that material came off, ah, no problem. But the rest of it is going to stay there because, because the wire is crisscrossing it. It's coming back the other way. So watch this. Now, as I'm bringing my wire up, I'm going to wiggle it back and forth because it's going to have the tendency to want to make those hackles lay down and we don't want that either. Um, see there, the hackle pliers came undone. That will happen to you when it does, just keep going. Uh, that represents too much pressure. And guys, that's how you learn about how much pressure to be using on your tools when you're using them. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna wiggle this thing back and forth in here and try to work it through those hackles there. And, and I'm, I'm just binding that stuff down and see what happens here. There's where I'm left with my wire up on top and my thread on the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tie that wire off now. Now I know my wire is absolutely secure. Now I can just take this wire and again using my thumb I can just kind of pinch it there and it'll break right off. Just like that. I know that my wire is secure in there. It's not going to go anywhere. Now is where, because I have the Renzetti, the, the uh, swiveling head here. I can actually turn this fly up. I can get right in there on this barbule that I don't like trapped in the thread and I can snip it. Okay? And then maybe there's a barb there. I'm going to go ahead and trim that one off. You don't want those barbs pointing forward because once they do, it pretty much that's the way they stay. Okay, so there's, there's my fly. I've now tied it um, and uh, I, I can see that I've got um, I've got some barbs that are trapped down in there. What do we do about that? We can take another hook and we can go in here and relieve them and comb them out. I can see that some of the wire actually did trap them down in there. So we're going to take our hook here and we're just going to comb these out. Okay guys, now I've taken my hook, I've kind of uh, uh, trimmed, uh, pulled some of those barbs out of there. Um, another thing you can do is you can kind of take your little mustache comb here right here and you can kind of comb this stuff up too. Uh, you know be easy with the hackles uh, they are a little bit fragile but you can work with them a little bit here and you're gonna see from me just like working with these things I can get them to kind of stand up and spread out all over the all over the fly okay now now I'm at the point where I have tied my base wrap my lead I've glued it I've tied in my tail I tied my chenille on, I tied my hackle on, and then I tied my wire over the end of that. The wire was the last step. If you follow these steps, guys, and you do exactly what I did on this fly, you can make exactly this same fly here. You can make it exactly the same way hundreds of times. It doesn't matter what color you use, but you can use any kind of material you want. You can use dubbing for your body. You can use wool. You can use anything. You do not have to use chenille for your body. Uh, you can use some of the dubbing uh, that I showed you in my dubbing um, uh, video. You can use that as your base. You do not have to use this stuff here. However, this stuff I have found does work the best. You don't have to sit there and spin it. It just goes right on. It makes a nice fly. Now the other thing is, is look at this fly. Look at the contrast. When the water hits this thing, this stuff is going to lay back and it's going gonna, it's gonna to meld in with the uh, chartreuse chenille and and the chartreuse marabou back here and what that does is it gives some lines to the fly and so now that we're at this point here 
I'm going to go ahead and tie this off using the whip finishing tool. Hopefully you watched that video because that explains exactly how to do it. I'm going to build this head up a little bit here because I want a nice little black head so when those fish see this thing they see some sort of a like a buggy looking head on this thing. So then I grab my whip finishing tool, I come around it, this barb is in the way, pull it off, boom, just like that. Whip finishing tool, boom, done. Take the thread, now pull on the thread while you and you can see I'm applying some pressure. What that does is it, it pulls that, that thread completely out of where it's tied, snip it. Boom. You can see there's very, very little tag end, if any, on the end. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hardest head cement right here and, and, and I'm going to just dribble a little tiny bit on there. And I'm going to flip it over because I've got the Renzetti. By the way, for those of you who didn't see my video on my, on my vice here, it's the Renzetti Traveler version. Runs about 125, 130, don't quote me exactly. I don't exactly remember, but I know it's somewhere around in that neighborhood. There you go, guys. There's a woolly bugger that's perfectly tied. And if and this this fly here outfishes every other fly that I have. There's one more key feature that I want to explain about this, guys. When you're using your hooks, I want you to look at this point right here. I want you to look at this point right here. The distance between here and here. See how my material stops here? This hook tip is still exposed here. If you're using too small of a hook, say maybe a 12 or a 14, what's going to happen is, is your material is going to come too close to the, to the barb and you're not going to hook fish. You don't have a sufficient enough gap right down here. Guys, when you're tying your flies, always be consciously aware of your gap down here because in order to catch a fish, you've got to have that gap. And if your material is going right up to that, right up to the, where the barb is, you're not gonna catch any fish and you're gonna go, dang it, why am I not catching fish? Well, that's why, right there. It's because you don't have enough gap in between there. So every single fly that you tie, look at it. Make sure that you've got a gap in there because if you don't, you might as well take your razor blade right here, Cut it all off and start over because you are not going to catch fish. I don't care who you are, what you say, you're not going to catch fish. It's going to be a deterrent when you go out there. You're going to be mad. There's a woolly bugger. Let's take it over to the water and see what happens to this thing when it gets wet so we can see what it looks like in the water. All right, let's bring it over to the faucet. Okay, guys, I just got the fly wet. It's the very exact same fly that I just tied. No BS, it's the same one. I got it wet. Now, this is what it looks like in the water. See the end here? Look at the end of the marabou here, how it comes down to a nice, fine tip. That's what you want. Now, you can see why I said your big barbs need to be in front and the little barbs need to be in back because when this thing tapers down, it has a nice, tapered shape to it. If you put the little barbs in front, you would not get this shape. So that's a very key important thing when you're tying the woolly bugger. No matter what woolly bugger you tie, no matter what color you tie, you always want those big barbs to be in the front and the little ones to be in the back. And that starts by tying in from the tip end of the hackle, which is here and not here. Don't make that mistake. Uh, that that's a that's a good fly right there. It catches a lot of fish for me very regularly. Um, I would say probably from March until July, this fly is very very effective. Um, as you get into the dry fly season, which is more like uh, June, July, August, uh, that's when you're going to be throwing your dries. And then back to uh, late September, October, this is when you're going to fish this fly again. So, anyway, uh, that's the fly guy. That's, that's an olive woolly bugger right there. That's my version of it. I've caught literally thousands of fish on this fly. Uh, I hope you decide to tie this one and add it to your arsenal because this really is a very provenly effective uh, fly. That's it. Thanks, guys.